Gail Noonan, and I'm here today with Bill Jamieson and A.J. Cutchaw to talk a bit about their work with um, Anthony Jamieson's studio. Bill is the principal artist, and A.J. is an apprentice to Bill and his studio mate. So first of all, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your education, and why don't we start with Bill? Sure. I'm a West Coast boy. I was brought up in, on the North Shore and uh, I graduated high school in Gibsons. Uh, spent a lot of my childhood on uh, my grandparents' cabin cruiser, cruising the waters. Um, I love scuba diving. I've spent most of my life on the water, sailing, cruising, you know, diving. All of my schooling in high school was directed towards academics. I thought I was going to go to college, and, and military college, and become a military officer, a uh, naval officer. And uh, but I always took art. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I became a uh, went through uh, my apprenticeship and became a journeyman carpenter and ran a construction company with my brother for a number of years. Um, and then that all kind of fell apart in the early 90s and I uh, came to Maine Island and apprenticed with my business partner, now retired, Michael. After working with Michael for about 10 years, I went to Sheridan College and got a diploma in uh, crafts and design specializing in glass where I took top honors and I have uh, taken a number of workshops at Pilchuck. I've been a teaching assistant at Pilchuck, which is a, an internationally recognized school that uh, teaches intensive training in specific areas of glass with instructors and students coming from all over the world. And I've worked for a short period of time at uh, Atelier de Verre de Sandra in St. Rosalie, Quebec, doing hot casting. My passion is working in, uh, in warm glass and kiln forming glass, and I've been doing it for over 30 years now. And now you have a wonderful assistant, oh, AJ Katra. So, AJ, can you tell us a bit about yourself, your education, and what brought you to working in glass? Well, I grew up in London, Ontario, and I did my education at Fanshawe College in Fine Arts. I've always had a great love of being in the forest, being along the river, and just exploring all the different environments that I could find in my hometown. I was doing photography, I was doing painting, I was doing mask making, I was doing sculpture, I was in just any, any medium that I could get my hands on, I wanted to explore. After my education over at Fanshawe, I decided it wasn't quite enough, so I went to Halifax, Nova Scotia to get my BFA. I did two years to finish up my credentials there, and I had an opportunity to come out west, so I decided to move to North Vancouver. And then in North Vancouver, I was just immersed in the mountains and going mm. into the ocean and just enjoying all of the nature around me. Mm. And through all of the various networks that I've been able to build, um, I heard that Bill was looking for an apprentice, and we had a couple of friends kind of edge him on and edge me on. and. It ended up that I came to Maine over two years ago, and Glass chose me, Bill chose me, and we've been <laughs> having a wonderful time since. Well, it seems like there's a really interesting um, collaboration here, where um, you sound like a water, <laughs> a water <laughs> being, and you sound like the forest and the mountains, and also lakes, rivers, the ocean. So there's a lovely blend of imagery between the two of you. Can you describe a bit how you work together? Initially, there was uh, more of a, a process of training. So, you know, when you're working in isolation, you don't have the opportunity to experience that richness that you get with critique and just being able to look at uh, ideas with a different set of eyes and uh, being able to communicate your uh, your thoughts, uh, I, I find is is one of the most wonderful aspects of, of our studio practice. But basically, 
everything that um, is done in the studio, we, we both take turns doing. And we continually have that focus of it's us and the work. Mm -hmm. We do our best work when we're continually challenging one another, whether it's on the composition of the work, on how the medium is worked itself, uh, the techniques that we're able to explore. And we're willing to experiment, but we're also willing to try something that just so much out of our comfort zone that we always used to know. It's, it's never about us, it's always about the work. Mm -hmm. And so often, I think, um, you know, until you get comfortable with the idea of critique, Mm -hmm. You feel that it's an attack on you, mm -hmm. you know, or a criticism on you as opposed to just somebody else's observations about, you know, what they're seeing in the work. And so, you know, we both kind of feel that way, which is, is quite nice. So I'm, I'm curious, how, how do you see the world and how does this impact your work? Well, for me, um, I've always been fascinated by light, mm -hmm. the play of light the way light dapples through a forest canopy, mm. the way light plays on the sea, you know, mm. on the waves. I can, I can be entranced for, you know, hours just watching the dancing light on the waves. Mm. Underwater, the way it penetrates through, through the, the darkening water as you go deeper and mm. how it plays through kelp forests. Mm -hmm. mm. It's about the play of light on the glass mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's always changing. Mm -hmm. It changes during daylight hours, evening hours, the way the sunlight dapples on it, the way it's hitting certain parts differently than other parts. And so I find that for me, the way I view the world is a direct expression on how I work with glass. So AJ, how about your environment? You sound quite entranced by the natural world and how does that influence your work? It's kind of a concert with Bill, where Bill enjoys light. I enjoy uh, color and form. Like, I love doing my painting because I get to encounter all these wonderful textures that I can mimic. And mm. I'm finding in the mold making techniques that we have in the glass studio, mm. I'm able to engage on that level while mm. also exploring all the different ways my line work can be conveyed within the medium. It's always a fascinating encounter being on the trail because it, just like the glass, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. We're surrounded by water, we're surrounded by mm -hmm. forest, and so much of our subject matter revolves around these two themes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, a lot of the work we do is based on the natural world. Yes, yes, it has a very prominent, prominent place in your work. The interesting thing I find is almost exclusively our clients collect art. That's where I think we have a natural tie-in with our clients. Our clients understand immediately what they're looking at. We've had a wonderful journey. All of our work is commissioned. There's a full portfolio behind us now. Mm -hmm. There's um, a list of, of clients that is quite extensive and interested people that's quite extensive mm -hmm. and relationships with trades and, and other crafts people and artisans and uh, fabricators, uh, First Nations artists that we have worked with, that we've developed wonderful working relationships with. At this Soup Fine Art Show we have two pieces that are for sale, but that's unusual for us. Most often it's all commission work where we work with the clients and I can say honestly that every single client we've worked with has been a joy and I think that they've enjoyed the process as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us Gail. Thank you Gail. Total pleasure. All commissions begin with consultations with our clients. We discuss the details of the commission such as what the commission consists of, the location and size of the project, we review our portfolio of previous projects and we discuss what the theme of the project will be. We also discuss options for embellishments, such as the application of colored art glass, sand carved work, water jet cutting, to name just a few. During this part of the process, the measurements are taken along with any relevant details 
such as the window or door manufacturer, the glazing contractor, and we develop a scope of work from this discussion. During this part of the process, the measurements are taken along with any relevant details such as the window or door manufacturer, if there is a glazing company involved, and we develop a scope of work from this discussion. We use this information to build a budget range. The range incorporates as much information as we have been provided at our initial discussion. Once the budget has been accepted, we begin to sketch up scaled concept sketches. Once a concept has been decided upon, we work with the client to refine that sketch until the details are accepted by the client. Once the concept sketch is approved, we use that sketch to develop the full-scale, fully detailed master drawing. We review the drawing to ensure all the details are accurate and in the appropriate locations. Once the master drawing has been accepted, the pattern is transferred from the drawing to the mold making material. The design is carefully sculpted by hand using knives, blades, rasps, and it is shaped and polished with various shapes and grits of abrasive sanding belt materials. This is a slow and laborious process requiring patience. This part of the process is done on a large light table to allow us to see the depths of our cuts and the gradations created by sanding. The mold material is an industrial product used to create gaskets for pulp mills, boilers and furnaces. It looks and feels like felt but is made up of alumina and silica fibers bound together with an organic binding agent. The glass is cast in the kiln on a bed of sand. A screed frame is placed onto the kiln and is leveled using a laser level. The screed is drawn across the sand to ensure a level and flat surface which will ensure a flat finished panel. Once all the mold making pieces are shaped, they are carefully placed on the prepared sand bed. The kiln is fired to burn off the organic binders in the mold material. Once the kiln has cooled, the glass is carefully placed onto the prepared sand bed. We fire the glass to a temperature of between 1445 and 1495 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the glass slowly slumps, allowing the glass to take on the details carved into the mold material, while allowing the glass to take on the detail of the sand bed. After the glass has cooled, Slowly, it is ready to be removed from the kiln. Once the glass has been removed from the kiln, it is clean. If sandblasted detail work is required, it is done at this stage. Water jet cutting is also done at this stage. Next, the glass is sent off to be tempered to make it safety glass. The application of colored art glass is done after tempering. Fabrication into sealed units may be done after tempering if required. After a final inspection in the studio, the glass is ready for installation.